Getting into today's action on the first day of the trading year, Tom Lydon of the ETFtrends.com says now is the time to diversify overseas. He's going to give us his top plays overseas. Hank Smith of the Haverford Trust Company, three plays to maximize your profit in 2015. And Bob Iacchino at the CME. Bob, let's look to Monday. Uh, frankly, this week is a vacation week. Monday's where the focus will be. We had some interesting words from the Cleveland Fed president. Did that put a damper on things today? I don't know that it had much of an effect overall. I think it's more forward-looking when you talk about statements like that. You see how quiet it is right now. You realize the futures market is still open. It is really, really silent. You had about half the average daily volume in the S&P cash that we would normally see. And just I don't put a whole lot of stock in these last three down days, depending on where we end up. Um, because it just says all the market participants aren't in here. The news is being digested, but not necessarily traded. Gotcha. Well, but Tom, you say that, you know, stocks are getting expensive. I had a guest in the last hour that was saying the same thing, that it doesn't add up. The market, once again, has gotten ahead of the U.S. economy and that we're going to have some issues coming up in the next couple of months. Well, everyone's been comfortable. That's the great idea. People feel really good about their portfolios for the past five years. I think the big challenge will be, as you go into 2015, make yourself uncomfortable. Look to some of those unloved areas like small cap stocks or, as other guests mentioned, overseas like Europe, India, China, where they've been unloved and underperformed. And with this monetary easing boom that we're seeing in these areas, it's really going to pay off. All right. Well, from from small cap to big cap, Hank, you recommend a number of big caps. I noticed Johnson and Johnson. Of course, that's way up from where it stood for close to two decades. But I want to pick on one Chevron. Now, Chevron's a great company. Right. If you're going to get into oil, uh, clearly Chevron's one of the key ways to get into oil. But it's down again today, over one percent, down to fifty two dollars sixty eight cents. You really want to be playing in oil right now? Well, look, I, I don't know as, as far as trading, whether buying Chevron this week or next week is the right move. Right. But for long term investors, uh, Chevron is a great opportunity here. You have nearly a 4% dividend yield. That's almost twice the uh, 10 year uh, Treasury rate. True. You have a very low valuation, and you have a company that's proven it can deliver positive returns to shareholders throughout each decade, regardless of where the price of crude oil has averaged out. You could go back to the 70s, where crude oil averaged at $10 a barrel, uh, the, the 80s, where it averaged $19 a barrel, the 90s, where $17 a barrel, the OOs, well, where it averaged $45 a barrel, and Chevron still providing well, good returns. Well, well, we're not going back there, but Bob, you know, look, he's talking talking about Chevron, he's talking about crude, but you've got Russia. Production could be increasing in places like Russia. I mean, other countries aren't, you know, stupid. They know that they've got to kind of get to the party now. What does that do for crude? Because that could affect these stocks that, that Hank is talking about. Well, I really do think that you're going to see a $40 crude price at some point, but I also ne don't necessarily think that that's the fair price for crude uh, through 2015. When you look at it, uh, analysts, including myself and others, have been saying for a long time there is a lot of crude in the market. And when you see a contraction in China's PMI, there's some of the demand problems with the increased supply that you might be seeing. But with the QE globally, I think that that's not where the mean is going to be for 2015. I think you could see $65 and you could see the market trade around that $60 range, down five, up five for most of the year if you averaged it out. And I think some of those plays could work out. You could also look at some of the asphalt makers. The heavy crude has averaged about $20 a barrel, lower than the WTI, but the price of asphalt is not falling yet. So in the next couple quarters, their profitability could go up as well. That's an interesting indicator there. All right, Tom Lydon, one of the reasons that oil is going down is the dollar is going up. It continues to go up uh, as, the, as other central banks in the world begin to, to, to loosen a little more weaken their currencies. Ours is going to strengthen more. How does that uh, play into our investments going into the new year? Well, I, I think, David, this year the average investor is going to learn more about currency and how it affects their portfolios. Just an example today, European markets down half a percent, but the dollar was up one percent compared to the euro. HEDJ, which is the Wisdom Tree Hedge Euro ETF, was actually up half a percent. So it could really affects your your global investments if you're not sure. hedged 
to the U.S. dollar. And this is something investors are going to be better schooled on as we move forward. Well, Hank, you know, I know that you like United Tech, but more importantly, Johnson & Johnson. And, you know, these big right. multinationals, right. the strong dollar is going to hurt them. It's going to hurt profits. What do you tell somebody when you're recommending Johnson & Johnson when potentially the currency issue could be their, their downfall in the first quarter? Right. It might have a near-term impact on reported earnings per share, but over the time, over time, currency works its way, and these great multinational companies do a lot of hedging and, and take a lot of that risk out of it. Uh, I think with these blue chips like J&J, &J, uh, like United Technologies and Chevron, uh, this, this is the play for 2015, not speculative stocks. We're at a point in this bull market where I don't think you want to be speculating, but you want to be owning high-quality, dividend-paying and dividend-growing stocks. And th those three are just classic examples that give you defensive exposure, J&J, &J, and a little offensive exposure with United Technologies and Chevron. Bob, uh, we had a Fed president I mentioned before. We're going to uh, hear directly from her coming up, the Cleveland Fed president, talking about when they may, might raise rates. One of the bugaboos I've had about what the Fed's been doing for a long time is whenever interest rates stay below inflation, as low as inflation is, interest rates are lower. And we've had that for three years. That's an unusually long period of time for that situation. It kills savers out there in the economy. It's great for Wall Street, but is that that going to change in 2015? Are we finally going to see a correction of that where interest rates hover a little bit above inflation coming up? Look, two things about interest rates. Number one, I think that when the interest rate hike comes, it's going to be the most telegraphed interest rate hike that we've ever seen out of any Fed. I think they're going to warn the market, warn the market. And I mean, let's face it, the bull markets are not all picking daisies and, you know, breezy field meadows. There's problems with bull markets, and that's going to be one of them. I think when that rate hike comes, it's not going to scare the market as much as it otherwise might. And I think that investors shouldn't be afraid to own some of these long-term shares. And I think your other two guests talking about some of the some of the crude names are really, really good ideas because if you're going to trade the moving oil, you trade the CL contract at the NYMEX. Otherwise, you invest in stocks. But, Bob, I got, I got to press you on this because if you can put up that chart that we just saw, again, are we going to see interest rates above inflation? As you can see, they haven't been for the past four years. No, not in 2015, but you'll see interest rates rise. I don't think they're going to surpass inflation in 2015. Well, you know, Tom Lydon, you're the one that talks about, you know, the global story in Europe. And I had somebody talk about that the last hour. We shall see. Um, Tom Lydon, Hank Smith, thank you guys. Appreciate thank you, it. everybody. Bye. Thanks, folks. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy, Happy New, New Year, too. Happy New Year to you.